What is up, y'all? I'm having a great day. Hope you're having a great day. It feels great to be a horror fan. Show you all today. We got a cool video. We're going to be talking about the best characters in the Halloween franchise, guys. So this is going to be a good one. Before we get started, definitely smash the like button because it definitely helps. And also, make sure y'all are subscribed to the channel. I mean, it helps. Definitely subscribe. So to get into it, these are... Are characters who I think are the best in the Halloween franchise. You can agree or disagree, but definitely I want some of your guys' favorite characters in the comments. Let's get into it. So starting off, I absolutely love this character. We have Jamie Lloyd, guys. Now, I want to talk a little about Jamie. So when it came to Jamie Lloyd, she really grew on me, bro, in Halloween 4. Like, from the I think I started loving Jamie when she was in the school and she was getting bullied by the kids you know her uncle's the boogeyman right Boog jamie because your uncle's the boogeyman 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 jamie's uncle's the boogeyman 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 i just i started following her you know because i'm realizing like right bro michael myers is her uncle like you know it, it was just interesting i've never seen anything like that you know in the halloween movie so just following her and she was young too so when i first seen halloween 4 i was young so it was just interesting to see jamie lloyd be you know in a halloween movie and be the main character really just her this just her character in general it had just so much depth to it just seeing her and, and learning that she possibly you know has eve on her at the end of halloween 4 and stuff like that and she did some crazy scenes man you know just being how young she was i know it was a couple you know it was some scenes when the double was involved especially on the roof and everything but she had some crazy scenes and i love that that clown costume sticks out just as much in my opinion as the one michael had on the 78 that's another thing what makes me like her character a lot just because that that clown costume that jamie lloyd had on was very iconic daniel harris is an amazing actor bro to get into it my favorite scene what i'm gonna say that came from jamie lloyd was probably i really enjoy it's between the opening when you know michael sits up by the bed and she's screaming or when she's in the store and Michael's putting the mask on behind there in the mirror. To, to me, those are just iconic scenes, you know, um, especially when it comes to Halloween 4 in general. Now, talking about Halloween 4, moving on to another great Halloween character, which I think might be my second favorite character in the franchise, if not Loomis. We have Rachel, guys, from Halloween 4. If you follow the channel, you guys know I love Rachel, played by Ellie Carnell. Um... Like I said, I feel like if they would have never made that big mistake in Halloween 5 to, to you know, unalive her early on in the franchise, she probably would be just as big as Laurie Strode. Like, they both they both have that same formula, you know, they're just like babysitters, not knowing what's about to happen later that night, and they get transformed into a final girl. You know, I just feel like, to me, Rachel's character felt a little bit more realer when it came to other characters in Halloween, like, you can relate to. And I always talk about this on her channel when she's on that roof, and just Jamie Lloyd is scared out of her mind, and you got Michael on top of the roof right there with her, and they're kind of trying to get the safety. She's like, get on my back, Jamie. And Jamie's like, I'm scared. She's like, well, try it. She's like, I can't. She's like, well, try it, damn it. I can't. Well, try it, damn it. When she says that, that sh it felt so real because in that moment it shows they're really terrified. They're scared. They don't know how this is going to end. So she's telling Jamie, like, bro, we got to go down swinging. We'll try. You know, we, we got to do this. We can't just sit here and just be, you know, a, a free meal to this guy. Now, when you kind of push forward and everything, even after she – I still don't get how Rachel – you know, the character survived that big-ass fall off that roof. I just don't get it. But, um, yes, I love her character through the whole Halloween 4. I was very sad they took her out in 5. Probably one of the worst mistakes they had, you know, in Halloween franchise history. Just because that character would have elevated so much in the Halloween franchise. It is insane. And I just like, you know, a lot of the scenes they decided to put Rachel in with Jamie, just having them bounce off of each other. That's why you got to love both of them. So next, we have another great character in the franchise that stand out, and it is Tommy Doyle, you guys. I'm talking about the Tommy Doyle from Halloween 1978. 
to be honest, when it comes to him, like Jamie Lloyd, he's a younger kid, so he was very interesting at the time when I first seen Halloween 78, and he still is interesting. And to be honest, I think he was the first one, for real, for real, him and Loomis. If you think about it, Dr. Loomis and Tommy Doyle was the first one that was very curious about the boogeyman, you know, who was really like he's out there, you know, and stuff like that. But Tommy, it was almost like he was believing in it as a kid, like, you know, the Easter Bunny and stuff like that. But it came to life when, you know, Lonnie Elam and everyone talking to him at school like the boogeyman the boogeyman and he, he kind of brought it to Lori and it's like he manifested Michael you know what I'm saying so overall his character was very interesting just because he had he gave you like that that monster hunter vibe like hey where is he I, you know but then I like that scene when he's trying to scare Lindsay Wallace but ends up scaring himself because Michael's like the boogeyman the boogeyman's outside gotta love it man but um uh, pushing forward to the next character is Allison from the Halloween trilogy. I know a lot of people kind of give her shit, man. They don't enjoy Allison's character. But for me, I really do enjoy Andy Matichak's performance as Allison. She gave me the vibe of a young Lori. Was she a young Lori? No. But she definitely gave me the vibe, you know, especially in the first one in 2018. That's what I thought they were going to build up to with her character just because it was a, a lot of things mirrored between her and young Lori, like the classroom scene in 2018 and in 78. You know, her scene when Oscar gets took out and then she's running in the neighborhood like Lori was in Halloween 78. Yeah, because like, you know, Halloween 2018, I really did think that Allison was going to be the new final girl and she was going to kind of take you know the spot for Lori because Lori was getting older and stuff but I guess that wasn't the case you know in 2018 she kind of started fighting back getting a shotgun and everything in the Myers house I legit thought that you know Allison was going to be the one in the end who possibly at least helps majority of the fight with Michael and take him out and probably Lori just puts the ice on the cake or something like that when it came to Michael but they took a different route I still enjoy Allison you know his character in a trilogy so she definitely deserves a spot next we have Lindsay Wallace now when it comes to Lindsay and Tommy, you know, they're like a duo, but I really did enjoy Lindsay, you know, especially in Halloween Kills. You know, her having that scene with Michael and he has her, you know, pent up to the car and she's fighting. And she, you know, I liked how she reacted to that scene when she saw Michael for, for the first time in a long time. She sees the boogie, she sees the boogeyman. She decides to get these bricks and rocks and put them in like this, this pillowcase and whack them bro like she just thought on spot and i liked it about Lindsay. and i thought that was so cool how you know she elevated to the older Lindsay. And then we saw her in ends she's like real chill and stuff like it kind of just felt real to be honest you know Lindsay's character felt real in the halloween trilogy seeing her from being young with tommy in 78 all the way to ends was crazy and like I said, you know, she saw Michael that night in 78 with Lori when they were upstairs and she ran out and jumped off the sidewalk with Tommy. And then she sees him again and kills and decides to fight back. I mean, you got to love Lindsay's character. I would have loved to see more of her at Halloween Ends, but we didn't get that. Uh, so that was crazy. That's the only thing I, I kind of was surprised. But like, why not put Lindsay in Halloween Ends? She's already in Kills. You know, why not have her help Allison and, you know, Lori? Y'all even had them talking at ends in the living room. They were talking about Corey. You might as well just would have had Lindsay involved, you know, but that's just me. And then we have Dr. Chalice, you know, played by Tom Atkins, man, um, Halloween 3. When it comes to him, it, he has a lot of depth to his character. Just following him and everything with Silver Shamrock and how he got down to the bottom of everything. You got to love that character. And he, he was just wilding, bro. He was an old man wilding, bro. He was wilding. I already know what I'm talking about. And he, he was clowning. He was clowning in the Halloween franchise. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoy his character, how he just got through everything with Silver Shamrock and the mask. You got that iconic ending. Stop it. Stop it. Like, bro. Stop it. Bro, you got to love Tom Atkins, man. He, he's the GOAT, bro, when it comes to, like, you know, actors and stuff like that. You, you have to love his performance, man. You have to. So, next, guys, we have Linda. Hi. From Halloween 78, a definitely a standout character for me on um, PJ Souls. So to push forward with this, she was just a, a character when it came to the Halloween franchise that brought energy to it. She brought energy to like Halloween 78. She brought a lot of energy to it, a lot of fun. And she was the, you know, the standout character for a teen or, you know, a, a young adult 
in Halloween 78, in 1978. You know, you saw the shit she was doing. She was wilding, having fun, laughing. And I think she played her character very well, you know, all the way to the very end to the point she was unalived. So you got to love Linda. Next, we have Molly from H2O. Now, I love this character. I don't know if, you know, some of you guys enjoy Molly, but, you know, this is John's girlfriend from H2O. I liked how she adapted to the whole situation. That's another thing, you know, with these characters. Some don't adapt. They just kind of get unalived on spot. You know what I'm saying? But Molly was one of the ones like Rachel who kind of adapted through the situation and everything. You know, John being the nephew of the boogeyman and stuff like that. She helped them out remember that scene when they're kind of running down like that uh driveway where he, where the school was and michael jumps down and he stabs john in the fucking knee or whatever the leg and then molly gets the brick and hit him oh my god bro like i, I really i like molly's character she had you know a lot of great moments in h2o to be honest when you sit there and think about it she she fought to the end you know with john next to john i love that scene when they drop the keys and michael he gets the keys on in h2o and then he's trying to swipe at John. She's like, no, no. And he opens the door. Oh, my God. That's that's H2O for you right there, man. That, that really is H2O. I really enjoy H2O. A lot of people, you know, are starting to kind of make that sync on our Halloween list. I don't know why, man. It's just getting better and better for me. So, overall, Molly deserves to be on this list. Next, we have Kelly Meeker who's played by Kathleen Kamat in Halloween 4. The reason, I'm going to tell you the reason I like her character. First off, we all need characters like this in movies. The ones that are there to create issues and stuff like that, but also they are good people. Kathleen Kamat played the Kelly, Kelly Meeker uh, character so well. When I met her in person, all I can think about is, Fuck off, way. I swear, bro. Like, that's why you got to love Kelly Meeker, man. She sold that one little piece of dialogue. And to this day, man, I always think about, you know, when she says that, you know, the long white T-shirt and everything. She's just a standout character. You know, in this video, we're just talking about characters that just stand out in the Halloween franchise. Kelly Meeker is definitely one of those, for sure. You know, everything she did to Rachel and crossed her with Brady. I still like, you know, Kelly Meeker. And now, this is a really funny character, man. You guys might be shocked at this one. Coming in on the list, guys, we have Julian, bro. Yes, Julian. When I tell y'all, I've laughed at the Halloween franchise a few times. You know, mess with this motherfucker, Dr. Loomis. You know, messing with a lot of crazy, cheesy scenes. I've laughed. But I don't think I've never laughed as hard as I laughed with the scene with Julian at Halloween 2018. <laughs> Okay. Vicky, bro. I swear to this day, I still laugh at that shit. I was in the theater losing my shit when that whole scene came about when Michael took out Vicky. She's like, yeah. He's like, nope. Nope. He was like, don't go up there. You're going to get killed, Dave. Like, bro, he, that month, bro, he ran and we did not see him to the next movie, bro. And then we, when we do see him in the next movie, Halloween Kills, we hear him say, she was my number one best babysitter. Oh, my God, bro. Like, that's classic to me in the Halloween franchise. Like, when it comes to comedy, it's going to be hard to beat that Julian scene, bro. I'm not going to lie. Then we see him in ends at the end doing a procession. Like, I'm a part of this shit. Like, I was there. Like, it was just funny because he's a kid. But he was a potty mouth kid. And just that whole scene with, like, Vicky and him on the couch felt real. Because these days, I'm not going to lie, some of these kids, they get them tripping. And he's like, I'm going to be sitting here clipping my nasty ass told nails like i loved it i just love it. it was comedy and julian he fit i don't think no one else could have played that role but julian they tried it with the jeremy character a little bit with Corey, and he's like i don't want to be babysitted by some ugly ass boy babysitter like yeah you're not julian i'm sorry <laughs> but shout out to that kid actor though but the character jeremy um i don't know about that i don't know i just don't know i don't, I don't think that um you're not, you know, it's not Julian, man. Julian was funny. He sold that shit, bro. Next, we have it. You guys might not like this one. And I understand. But I'm going to be unalived on that hill for this, this guy, man. Just because I really enjoyed him. And it's Corey Cunningham. When it comes to, like, you know, Corey Cunningham, I know a lot of people who didn't like him because of the things he did to Michael. He definitely body slammed him. Uh, for sure, that kind of threw me off. I always say that. But to be honest, I'm going to tell you, man, I really liked, you know, Corey Cunningham. When it comes to characters, 
you know, and just depth and everything. You you can't take that away from the character. I'm not gonna lie. He had a lot of depth to him from beginning to end. Was he must was he misplaced in the trilogy? Yeah, a hundred percent he was misplaced. But I think if he was like there from the start, it'd have made more sense. We always talk about what if Corey Cunningham was Cameron. I always say I think that would have worked better if Corey Cunningham was Cameron. But when it comes to, you know, Corey Cunningham kicking off with the whole babysitter thing with him, you know, him babysitting Jeremy, all the way to him dealing with the bullies, him ending up, you know, being in a relationship with Allison and then ending off with Lori. It was just crazy. It was some ride, you know, and him being kind of converted into a copycat Michael Myers and taking out his bullies with a Michael Myers get up on it, stuff like that. I just really think it was crazy to see this kid in the beginning that was like nerdy and stuff like that and then elevate with evil and just start taking out his enemies. And especially like in Michael Myers form was wild to me. And I really got invested in Corey Cunningham from that moment we see him at the store, the one-stop shop, and he's like, hey, man, me and my friends, you know, we're, we're seniors and all that, and he's like, no. Like, and then the milk sit the scene, and Lori comes to the rescue, and then him and Lori clicks. From that moment, I was kind of following it, but I still understand why people, you know, don't enjoy you know, Halloween ends and the character just because we are used to something and then we get something drastic like this. That's a change. That is crazy. It's like, why? You know what I'm saying? But I, overall, I enjoy Corey Cunningham. Ron Campbell did a great job. Amazing performance. His character definitely has a lot of depth to it. And I was invested. In it. I'm not going to sit up here and say I wasn't. I really enjoy Corey to this day. You know, it was a story that I think could have been put in a new Halloween TV series. It would have worked better in a TV series for like a spinoff, you know, but overall, I did enjoy now coming in with another craze when you guys might be like what the hell are you what are you doing right now but this is the characters i think like it or not they are highlighted in the franchise we always talk about them we always bring them up from crazy moments to iconic moments and stuff like that we have freddie harris played by buster rhyme trick or treat motherfucker now, the reason I put him on this list because I hear his name a lot. Like it or not, when it comes to, you know, the Halloween franchise and, you know, Resurrection especially, I hear his name a lot from joking to him kicking Michael out the window like Bruce Lee and just the the, the lines he sang, the, the dialogue they gave him. I mean, what's not to like about Freddie Harris? I think for that time, being in Hall with Halloween Resurrection, that character was cool. Now, he will get fried. I'm going to be honest, he will get fried in the Halloween franchise, but for that time being a resurrection, this is one of the ones I've seen in theaters growing up. I think he fit, you know. I love that scene when he's like, let the danger tame it, but get out this one. It just felt like Busta Rhymes in the Halloween movie. Um, They did do some cringy-ass shit, you know, him telling Michael Myers, oh, I'm Michael Myers. Yeah, of course, that was cringy and stuff like that, but... um. To be honest, I don't hate the look of Michael in Resurrection. I mean, he has no eyeliner and shit like that, Brad Laurie, but I feel like I don't hate that Michael. I actually enjoyed the way that Michael looked over the other looks, for sure, like the other ones in the past. I think that one looked a little bit more scarier. It was just you could see the eyeliner and stuff like that. But overall, I think Freddie Harris was a great character, man. That boy was going around that house tripping. He was the first copycat. Speaking of Corey Cunningham, Freddie Harris was the first copycat. He put the mask on. He was walking in the house. He was he thought he was Michael until he bumped into the real Michael. That's how I should have played out the Halloween ends. You know, he bumped and then everything happened. He's like, run! Run, got his ass took out. So Halloween 4, we got Bucky. We got Bucky, man. You guys know what it is with Bucky. We always bring up Bucky just like Freddie Harris. Got the iconic saying, don't play that Halloween shit with me. Don't try that Halloween shit with me. He gets his ass fried. Gets electrocuted. But I like the heart. He had he had a pair on him for real, for sure. I see somebody like that walk up to me while I'm fixing some damn electricity. I'm getting in the car. He obviously is crazy. He has on a fucking Michael Myers mask. I mean, it sounds crazy because, you know, Michael Myers is, you know, in his world. So... It's Michael Myers. They don't even look at it like, oh, he has a mask on or whatever. But he has the mask on to get up, bro. You got to get the fuck up out of there, Bucky. But I like them chewing on that fucking gum. I always wonder, what type of fucking gum was that that Bucky was chewing on, man? They need to sell that. Hey, Halloween 4, go ahead and get that licensed Bucky gum. That shit looked good. So now we have another one. We have young Michael 
from the Rob Zombie Halloween film. Now, some of y'all might not like this, but I love it. I really did enjoy Young Michael. Now, the movie does have some like rugged turns and stuff like that, but Young Michael, I really enjoyed him. He kind of felt like a real like kid, young teen that was off the rocker, bro. Whatever you want to say, because that look when they were taking his mask off in the bathrooms and stuff you know when he ends up taking out ronnie in the house you really thought like he could be michael myers played by dake farks i want to say is his name but he really did a great job man i really liked his character especially that scene when he takes out judith he did a good young michael man i don't know if it was because of his character or how he portrayed michael you know he has the big mask on he's whacking her down the hallway i like that scene that scene was actually cool it's underrated to me and his performance is underrated and now I understand people like to kind of mush things together and say, oh, the whole movie is whack and everything, but you cannot take away from his performance. His performance was crazy. As a young kid, being Michael, the shit he was saying and doing that scene with the branch in the woods, brutal. You know, for a young kid to be on that, that's wild, bro. I'm not listening. Ah! you gotta love it bro i really do like halloween you know 2007 by rob zombie it's very underrated i hear people give it shit all the time that's fine but i personally am on a train where i enjoy it i really do like tyler man as michael myers now the second one does go off his rocker but i'll be i'm trying to find some time in my life to kind of step to the side and try to understand this movie a little more because i want to man i want and it's not like i don't i don't want to i want to understand halloween too a little more you know with the horse and shit like that sherry moon zombie but right now i'm digging 2007's halloween so to push forward we have Annie from Halloween 78, you gotta love Annie, just because at the end of the day, like I've been talking about in my previous theory videos, I think she can be the reason Michael is, you know, Michael, to be honest. I think that moment she said, hey, jerk speed kills, it leads up into everything where we're at now. I think she was just the character, she's like the how can I put it? She's like that character that we look over the whole time. She was very important to the halloween franchise i think we look over her because she had a lot of cool moments too you know she felt like that that teenager that the one that's you know out trying to look for some layup time with the guy and stuff like that and ends up getting what she's looking for and whole time not knowing what she says to people catches up with her eventually you know i just liked her character though she just fits halloween you can't say halloween 1978 without saying linda and annie and Lori, you just can't, bro. They are a part of that movie. That's their movie for real. When you, th when you think about it, it kicks up with them. And they're surrounding the whole, you know, story and plot and how them feel. So it makes sense. So Annie for sure has made this list. And then we have John from H2O. Now, I was kind of I was kind of hesitant on putting Josh Hernett on the list, John, because I really he just started growing on me because in the when I first started watching Halloween, it was like some of the shit he was saying was cringe. But you know what's crazy? When I was young, I really thought that was Jamie Lee Curtis' his son. I'm talking when I was like 12. Like, I don't know why. They kind of resemble a little bit. I'm just being so serious. Like in the face, I thought that was like her real son or something. But that's just me. Maybe I'm tweaking out right now. But I liked his character at the end, like the final act of uh, H2O. He did great as like a low-key final guy and stuff like that. And adapting to, you know, his mother's story with his uncle and everything. It's almost like Josh is like Allison and Karen. He was like, you got to let it go. Let it go. I'm not responsible for you. All the crazy shit he was saying the whole time at the end of the movie it's your story now you're involved that's the whole crazy thing about halloween eventually it's the people that are the non-believers and then by the end of the night they are the believers and they also are a part of the story so now you're a part of history and you're you're dealing with michael right now you might make it you might not make it i mean look at karen stroll and halloween trilogy but next, we have Sarah from H2O. Now, Sarah, she's kind of in that bracket with Linda and Annie. She's that character, like, you know, Kelly Meeker. She's that character that's right there to bring some dialogue, you know, some depth and stuff like that. But she is a great face, you know, in the Halloween franchise, in my opinion. Her her unalived moment in H2O was one of the craziest moments, you know, from the, the elevator uh, doors dropping on her fucking leg. And she's crawling. And Michael's standing over her with this big ass like lamp i don't even know if that was a lamp i think that was just a regular butcher's knife but that was crazy man how she's like running for help she's literally in the the fucking the elevator shaft with a body going that's how 
crazy it was getting. She literally needed to get up out of there. So she got in there with the elevator shaft. But yeah, I really did enjoy, you know, Sarah's character. She doesn't have too much going on with her. But when I think of Halloween, you know, sometimes she comes up for some reason. Uh, just because she did a great, she did a great job in ha Halloween H2O, in my opinion. So, and then next, we have my guy, Lick His Lips Cool J. No diddy. We have... <laughs> Ronnie, I, bro, if you're a Halloween fan, Freddie Harris and Ronnie, you got to love Ronnie. Just the whole phone talks with the girl or the wife. And like, remember, he tells John, he's like, comb your hair. He's like, comb your hair. I'm like, bro, this shit is crazy. He's on the phone. He's like, I love you too, baby. Bro, you got to love LL Cool J. Who, would you have ever thought you would see LL fucking Cool J and Busta Rhymes in a Halloween movie? It was crazy, but... Comment down below. This is the real. This is the real battle. Who do you guys like more? Freddie Harris or Ronnie from H2O? Bro, that's a good one right there. Freddie Harris. We got to talk about that on stream. Freddie Harris or Ronnie from H2O, bro. They're both funny as hell, man. But yeah, Ronnie was like, yeah, I'm good, man. The bullet just graced me. Walking off the fucking, like he's a fucking superhero. You got to love him. It's just that comedy of it, man. We have Michelle Dawson as Nurse Deb in Halloween Ends. I really enjoyed, you know, her character a lot. Big shout out to Michelle Dawson. Um, She brought a little life to Halloween Ends. She has one of the best kills in the franchise, in my opinion, kind of mimicking that Bob kill. And I liked how her character was kind of like a, different character it had a little twist to it she was trying to get in with the doctor to get this spot over allison the whole time she got what she was looking for and i like that she probably was the most of you know most life in halloween ends that wasn't like the main character you know what i'm saying like when it came like allison Lori, and you know Corey. when you look at it nurse dad was she had brought a lot of life to halloween ends with that scene when michael comes out the closet and chokes her out i really liked her you know scenes she did have and she brought a lot of different dialogue to halloween end so big shout out to michelle dawson nurse deb had to make the list and next we have it guys the man himself Dr. Loomis. Man, look, you cannot simply have Halloween without Dr. Loomis, to be honest. He has to be incorporated in it somehow, just off the energy he brings in his character, man. I remember it just being times with Dr. Loomis, bro. I thought he was just crashing out, especially when you know how he was treating Jamie Lloyd in Halloween 5. He was crashing out when it came to Jamie Lloyd just because, you know, all of this surrounded Michael. He was the first one to kind of understand, like, hey, man, this guy is dangerous. You know, he's evil. He's not like who you think he is. He's not just some killer. He's literally evil. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. He is the Van Helsing of the Halloween franchise, in my opinion. Just hunting this evil out in Haddonfield, bro. It was crazy. It was, if you look back in Halloween, that shit was literally driving Dr. Loomis crazy, bro. Like, in Halloween 4, he was crashing out. You remember? And then... What's crazy about everything, Dr. Loomis is such a hero when it comes to, you know, the Halloween franchise and just the town of Haddonfield in general. In 2018, we hear these tapes with Dr. Loomis saying, incinerate the body, make sure all vital organs are not working. That his vitals no longer function and immediately incinerate the body. That was basically... Dr. Loomis helping them later in the end with Halloween ends. Because how did they take Michael out? Remember what Lori did to Michael? She made sure all vital organs wasn't working. And they incinerated the body to the point it was nothing left. So in all reality, they gave Loomis his flowers by listening to the formula to take out the boogeyman. All these iconic moments with Dr. Loomis. Rest his soul, Donald Pleasance, man. I only imagine, I know he would have been older, how it would have been if he had a cameo in the Halloween trilogy and stuff like that. I mean, we did get Tom Jones Jr., which was was amazing but the dr loomis man i shot him six times you know all of that bro that is so iconic just the energy the crash out energy in halloween showing how obsessed he was with michael myers to the point people were convinced they were convinced about dr loomis man he was crashing out over michael but that's how dedicated he was to taking out the boogeyman think about it the whole halloween 78 he's out in haddonfield you know going to try to find out where michael is and he finds out once he sees Tommy and Lindsay jump off the sidewalk and then a story kind of kicks up for him and Lori and stuff. Overall, Lori and Loomis and Michael are Halloween. Those three characters right there are the heart of Halloween in my opinion. And finally, we have it guys. The one, the only, the final girl, 
Lori Strode. Lori Strode is Halloween. She's Halloween. When you think about it, she's just as big as Michael. Same with Sidney Prescott and Ghostface. She, you know, is that character that you need. She's that final girl. This is where it started with Lori and it ended with Lori. That's all pretty much you got to say. Uh, she fought to the end. 40 years. It had some twists and turns along the path in the Halloween franchise with the trilogy revealing that it was never about her the whole time. It seemed to be her life got jacked up because of this. And, you know, when it comes to Lori and, you know, just final girls in general, she's my favorite. She has a lot of depth to her. And I liked how they wrote her character on a 78 you know her just being an innocent babysitter and she takes a twist and turn and becoming a final girl in rough house on some sarah connor shit man without Lori stroll you won't have none of these great moments on halloween for real for real if you think about it she brings a lot of energy to halloween because i mean michael can operate without Lori. i'm gonna be honest we don't seen in halloween four and five and you know we don't seen it for sure but i feel like she's a big part of halloween you guys know what i mean like i said Lori strode is halloween jamie lee curtis did a phenomenal job as Lori strode i don't see no one ever being able to fill those shoes of Lori strode but jamie lee curtis that's her character to the point i'm pretty sure people probably see her sometimes and call her Lori strode instead of jamie lee curtis because she's that great of you know a character in the halloween franchise but overall these are the characters that i feel that stands out in the halloween franchise you know from iconic moments great moments to kills everything great dialogue just memories when it comes to the halloween franchise and you know them just standing out and being great characters and things like that so yeah guys comment down below which characters are some of the characters that you also love and think stands out in the halloween franchise and comment down below also if you want me to do another franchise with the characters man definitely comment down below unfortunately this is the end of the video i want y'all to hit me on my social media i like screen on instagram i like screen underscore on tiktok brandon on facebook i like screen on twitter and yeah you are right there where it says subscribe next to it click join and become a member of the channel i want you all to watch some horror movies stay scary out there peace until next time y'all